Hello, viewers. David Oliver here on the Preaching Humanist back again. Well, as you can see, I'm not back at the studio. So in the meantime, I got to continue to do my stuff in my little homemade studio with my lack of technology. And you can see my favorite sign. I miss holding those signs up there. Secular humanism, good without a God. Pretty soon I'll get back out there and pass out literature. Uh, also, I wore one of my favorite shirts. I took it out and brought it out of the closet. Get it? Out of the closet? I like to wear this shirt occasionally. So, I want to discuss a two-part series. Number one, this week, part one. Part two, next week. Secular social clubs versus secular movements. The difference? Can you have both? All right. So, let me tell you a little story here. Both of these instances happened a few months ago in late 2019 in a particular coffee shop. Uh, one and the other one I met at uh, one of the Christmas parties or the holiday parties for the secular communities here in Austin. Well, we had a low turnout. There were probably 20, 25 people at this large uh, get-together for the holiday season for secular humanists and atheists. And one of my friends from one of the groups was there, a middle-aged woman, very sweet lady, her and her husband. And I said, hey, good to see you. I said, well, the only thing I'd like to see today was more people show up. We want more from different groups, and we want others to learn about secular humanism. She made a comment that's very interesting. This is very, very common in my experience with people in various secular humanist groups. She said, well, David... I know there's only a few of us here, but that's okay. We're having fun. We don't need a lot of people, just our small little group. Now, I also had a talk with an individual, another middle-aged woman, a good friend of mine. Uh, she's really into the movement aspect of it. She identifies as secular humanist and atheist. I saw her at a grocery store. This was all pre-coronavirus. And I said, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you at these particular meetings in the humanist communities here in Austin. She said, I, interesting, don't want to go to this particular group anymore because they're only a social club. I want a movement. I like to do things. I get it. I see both sides to it. So the question you've got to ask yourself, what are your group objectives? What are your goals as a secular community? It's either a social club, which is good, or a movement, which is good, or can you combine both? And you know where I'm headed on that. I'll get to that in part two. So today, the good part, the pluses of secular social clubs only. Number one, well, humans are social, right, by nature. We know that. And we are happiest when in relationships of like-minded individuals. That's very important about having these communities of like-minded people. Number two, they meet the needs of community, belonging, caring, sharing, cooperation, etc. Very similar to churches because we're all human. These are all very important. Now, let's talk about the bad or the minuses of secular social clubs only. Those that kind of lack that old fire, right? To make change and to get out. My experience through the years, and I've been in this movement here in Austin for many, many years, and it goes all the way back to the 70s and 80s, hell, to the 50s when I was born, about movements and social clubs, because I experienced the same thing in Christianity when I was a young preacher years ago. So here are my experiences of secular social clubs only. Number one, there's a lot of internal bickering. I've noticed that. A lot of arguing with fellow secular people. There's only a few people. The same people show up all the time. They don't have the interest of going out and talking to others. Number two, I notice there's a lot of arguing over frivolous topics. Sure, dialogue's good. Personally, I'd rather be out there working and doing some things for the movement. But they tend to have a lot of arguing over unimportant frivolous topics. Number three, a lot of complaining. I hear a lot of complaining in some of these little social, secular social clubs. There's a lot of complaining, I've noticed, about religion. I get it. 
about politics, I get it, and, sad to say, the other secular groups across town who have a little different flavor of their atheism or humanism. So there's a little complaining, actually a lot of complaining, I find in these type of individuals that prefer their little club only. And number four characteristic is they're very uninterested about sharing and growing the humanist movement. Now, you know that's what I'm about. Now, the problem is you get a little stagnant here when you don't want to go out. So, we, here's what I hear from people in some of these groups, so not just here in Austin, I've got groups in Houston and even up in Dallas that I go to and try to promote secular humanism. Well, we don't want to promote David. It's too much like Christianity. We don't want to try to go out there and promote this. Um, that's too evangelistic, David. That's what you do. Well, not long ago, I was speaking at one of the groups here at Austin. Let me tell you another story, a true story. And two weeks after my talk at this particular group, humanist group, and I talk about going out there and advancing and promoting secular humanism, because I think it's something that people need to hear. It's the best thing we got. It's the best philosophy worldview we have. And it replaces those Christian and theistic beliefs, right? So this uh, particular individual who was speaking this morning I was there, who heard me speak two weeks ago, came up to me before his turn was to talk. And he said, David, I heard your message here two weeks ago. Now it's my turn on humanism. But I want you to go ahead and ask questions when I'm finished during Q&A because I know we're going to disagree a lot. Because I know you try to go out there and deconvert and change and argue with Christians. Now, I stopped and said, my friend, you were sitting right there listening to me. I explained clearly that I'm not out there preaching to believers and why they need to repent of their belief in God and come to humanism. I simply go out there and promote, first of all, show what an atheist looks like, because most of them have never met an unbeliever, and also to promote this beautiful worldview and grow it rather than just sitting in there in a little group, right? Uh, so I had to explain to him, dude, it has nothing to do with that. You're not, you're not listening. So if you present yourself as just going out promoting, a lot of people are going to misinterpret that. It goes both ways, believers and unbelievers also. So here's the thing I find. I find that many of the social, secular social clubs only become, and there's two words here I want to talk about, their verbs, action. They become stagnant and they can become imbalanced. That was true back in my preacher years. I used to go out there to different churches and tell Christians, this is what you do. Let's get out of ourselves. Let's go out and share this message of Jesus. Because at that time, that's what I thought societies needed, right? I was wrong, but I was a good guy. I just wanted to help people, right? So, I went out to educate my fellow believers, folks, let's get out because we will become stagnant if we only have a Christian little social club. We don't want to share it with other people. So you can become very stagnant. You have an inflow, a little bit of people coming in, but you don't have an outflow, right? It becomes stagnated. And number two, of course, there are imbalances. I'm trying to find a balance. Now, I think I'm coming into that now because you have the secular social clubs, all the beautiful things about it, but also the movement. I think we can have both. So it comes down to this. If it's a secular social club, that's your choice. If that's what you want, I'm not angry at you. That is fine. But just be careful. Check your motive. Check yourself and think about this. If it's just about you and your little group and you don't want to share it with other people, Grow and promote something that you think really does benefit others, which I know it does. Um, then is that selfish or is that selfless? So make sure that you're not being selfish because to me, that tends to be very selfish. Now, I said the same thing to believers back in the 70s and 80s. I said, fellow believers, it's selfish for you to sit on what you know, well, we believe that would help others. Let's go out and share it, grow, and promote. So, 
um, in a few weeks, or maybe by next week, I'll have part two on this, and let's go ahead and discuss uh, how we can have movements as, as well and combine the two. All right? So thank you so much for watching The Preaching Humanist. Remember to let the light of secular human, humanism shine. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful day. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? No, 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 you're done.